Hi guys. Well, <laughs> there will always be a morning after. Uh, uh, I guess in this case, an afternoon after. It is now the afternoon. It is a Sunday afternoon. Ironically enough, December 31st, 2023, as we move into the last 12 hours of 2023. And I've been wondering, uh, I, I have been wondering how I was... <laughs> You're going to be closing out the year 2023 and I, I have to admit I, I did not see this one coming. I want to dedicate my final video of 2023. I'm going to dedicate this video um, to Carrie Jane Richmond, whatever your last name is darling uh carrie jane richmond i remember the day i met carrie jane richmond uh we were both 12 years old we were both 12 years old walking home from seventh grade at fernbank elementary school uh walking down heaton park road and I spied this 12-year-old child. She was wearing one of these. Uh, this would have been in, uh, well, if I was 12, it was, it was right around uh, my, my 12th birthday. So this would have been in about 1971 or 72, whichever year that was. Uh, I spied this 12-year-old girl uh, that I had never seen before in her little buckskin. She had one of these, you remember those little buckskin outfits where the fringe came off the, uh, you know, came off the back of the sleeves and shit. She was wearing one of those buckskin jackets and a cowboy hat. I had never laid eyes uh, on this uh, on this girl, and I was of course I was twelve years old, and I saw this vision come in to, to, into my life for the first time, and for the first time in my life, I felt Cupid's arrow knock the living shit out of me and I knew my life was never going to be the same that uh, Paul, that Paul Simon song the first time uh, what was it the first time that I saw you and you came into my life I'm gonna get that girl no matter what I do and it took me six years, six years of uh, patiently waiting throughout our high school career at Druid Hills High School in Atlanta, Georgia. I had to sit there in agony and watch Carrie Jane Richmond, you know, she was the cheerleader in the, on the drill team and blah, 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 you know, dating the quarterback. And I, I don't even remember if she was the homecoming queen and just sitting back there absolutely in, 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 in love with, 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 with this girl. I, I loved Carrie Jane Richmond. Uh, more than any human being I, I had ever met and, and, and I just kept telling myself, Hambone, she is going to be your woman and she is, going, she is going to be your woman for the rest of your life. You just need 
to be patient, play the game right, and don't fuck up. It's going to happen. I spent my entire high school career trying to manifest Carrie Jane Richmond into my life. It took six years. Six years. I spent patiently waiting for Carrie Jane Richmond to understand that Hambone Little Tail was her soulmate and that we belong together till the day we died. Six years. And you know what's interesting? I don't even remember when it happened. When the universe said, okay, brother, you've been waiting six years for this opportunity to have this woman in your life. And somehow, Carrie Jane Richmond and I were alone together, just the two of us. I don't know if we, I think we just bumped into each other somewhere. And I decided, okay, Hamba, this is your one chance. I was, uh, I was 18, I think maybe I was just getting ready to turn 18 years old. So I was probably 17 and somehow we bumped into each other. Uh, and, and I decided to shoot the moon and, and, and tell Carrie, I, and we, we had been friends, you know what I'm saying. It, it's not like we were total strangers. Uh, I mean, we saw each other around school and we were, we were always perfectly friendly to each other, but we, we were never close friends and she never had any idea that I had been in love with her since the second I laid eyes on her and I had one opportunity. One opportunity. 17 year old kid and I took it. And I told Carrie Jane Richmond I, uh, about the hell that, uh, that she had put me through for the past six years and she's like, like, what are you talking about, Sam? And I told her, I, 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 I said, Carrie, I remember the very first moment I laid eyes on you. And she kind of laughed like, hell you do. And, and I said, I can tell you exactly what you were wearing. And I explained described this little buckskin outfit that she had when she was 12 years old and, and I described where I first saw her which was you know on her route home this was when you know kids actually walked home from school and, instead of taking the school bus I explained what she was wearing where she was standing and, 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 and how at age 12, I knew that she was my soulmate and, 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 that, uh, and, and, and that she was, uh, that, that just, she was my soulmate and, and we belonged together. I, we were two 17 year olds. And I don't know, I don't even know, I think she was actually dating my uh, a friend of mine, John Garrison, I'm pretty sure that she and John were, were, were dating. I don't know where he was when, uh, when the universe put me in the same spot. Anyway, that was that. I took the plunge with Carrie Jane Richmond and she took my bait. And for the next two years, so it's basically when we were 18 and 19, uh, we had this love affair 
the, the you, you, you know this young love uh, that it it completely consumed us the passion that we had for each other for two years I mean it, it, it was an all consuming fire that when we were together you know we, we were the kind of couple that that people would tell us when I you know when when Carrie and I when we would walk into a room together that the whole room would uh, would, would would fall silent. That the, the the this the this energy that we created together when when we had both a, you know we were young, we were beautiful, we uh, we we had the entire world was ours. We were king and queen of the fucking world and we let everybody know it and and, and for two years i i would i was in, in in this love affair with this girl uh that you know a, a once in a lifetime love affair that 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 people probably go through lifetimes without ever knowing what it felt like to be with her and and, and 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 guys do not tell me why it was New Year's Day 1980 43 years ago I mean it was so it was actually New Year's Eve it was 43 years ago tonight that Carrie Jane Richmond and I well, it wasn't the last date we ever had, but it was the last date we had as king and queen of the world because for some reason, so I was going to college, so I started college in Atlanta and uh, I, I, she was the, the dean's daughter in every university. So I just assumed that Carrie was going to be going to fucking Emory, but she went to Emory at Oxford. I mean, she went to the branch about 60 or 70 miles from, uh, from Atlanta. Uh, and and uh, I, 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 I was absolutely horrified when, when, when she made this decision. So we only saw each other on the weekends. To this day, I don't know what the decision was, why she moved from Atlanta 60 miles away. She didn't see what the problem was. She says it'll actually give us time to actually devote to our studies instead of just being joined at the hip seven nights a week. So. We spent that uh, first semester, uh, the fall of, uh, of 1979, uh, with, you know, visiting, just seeing, we would get together on Friday afternoon, fuck our brains out for 48 hours, and, and then split up on Sunday night. And I would go back to Atlanta, or she would go back to Oxford, and, uh, and, and this went on for how well September, October, November, December, but for whatever reason I made probably one certainly one of the most fateful and probably stupid decisions of my life. Uh, we 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 were apart too much it was just being away from her for five days a week. The, the, the thought of being apart from her for five days a week for the next four years uh, was killing me. And then uh, she started getting into her new life and I started getting into my new life. I, I was making new friends. 
uh, at, 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 at school in Atlanta. She was getting her circle of friends going down there. Uh, in, in Oxford, we were drifting apart. Uh, and, and I made the decision on, uh, well, I don't know when it, I actually made the decision, but I made the decision that we were going to have one last New Year's Eve together, uh, you know, between 1979 and 1980, and I was going to dump her on New Year's Day, 1980, that I was going to uh, walk out of the relationship with the woman I loved more than, than any human being I had ever known. It was, it, 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 it was, it, 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 it was the single hardest thing I have ever said, because, because we were still in love with each other. And so we, we, we wake up Monday morning, we fuck our brains out, uh, July, uh, January 1st, 1980, uh, she gets out of bed, and you know, like, like we're starting a, a new day, a new year uh, together, and she was having to go back to Oxford uh, a couple of days later, and, and you, you know, she's just, you know, sitting there getting dressed, uh, talking about our day, and, 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 and I said, darling, you need to come sit down, and we need to talk. And yeah, you know, just the look on her face, that old we need to talk look. So she came and sat down next to me on the bed and you know like, like what's up? And I said, it's over. Forty-three, forty-three or forty-four years ago tomorrow. Tomorrow is twenty twenty. Or forty-four years ago tomorrow, I, I said the two hardest words I have ever said to another human being. And I walked away from her. It, you know. It's that decision has has haunted me every day of my fucking life for 44 years. You, you know, my mother, Elaine Mitchell, who stayed out of my business, you know, she absolutely loved Carrie. She, uh, I, she would later introduce Carrie as my as my former future daughter-in-law. She just assumed everybody assumed that Carrie and I were getting married and, and, and you know and, and spending our lives together. Uh, my my mother already had us married uh, when I told my mother that I had just broken up with Carrie. I mean, she, she, was, she, she was absolutely livid. And, and she, just, she just looked at me and she said, you will never, you will never find a love like that again as long as you live. That's what my mm, that, That's what she told me forty-four years ago tomorrow. You will never find a love like that 
as long as you live. When I was 20 years old, and for 40 years, for 40 years, my mother was right. I mean, I went through a seven year bad marriage. How many uh, 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 these goddamn relationships with women, the, all of these failed relationships, uh, just kicking my stuff. You might remember that at age 55 that I actually got back with Carrie J Jane Richmond at age 55 and we, we had not seen each other in 35 years. And we, we met up uh, in uh, Paonia, Colorado, uh, the birthplace of, uh, of uh, Terrence McKenna. 35 years later, we actually met up and, and, and had our little reunion. Uh, and then uh, and, and made plans for uh, the, the next, uh, that was in October of uh, whatever year that would have been when I was 55, nine years ago, and, and making plans for the next spring because I was going to St. Croix for the winter and on uh, Christmas Eve I got a uh, I, I, I got an email from Carrie uh, wishing me Merry Christmas, letting me know that she had met a guy in a bar and they were getting married so she would not be seeing me next spring. <laughs> And that was the end of Carrie Jane Richmond. I wish her well. Uh, but anyway, not counting, not counting that night, <clears throat> 40 years when my mother told me you will never meet a love like that again. That, that, that was a once in a lifetime opportunity you just fucking blew it 40 years I waited for that Cupid's arrow that uh, I saw that that little 12 year old girl in the buckskin jacket shot at me turning my life into a living hell for six years, uh, waiting for her to understand that I was uh, the man she was supposed to be with, and then I fucking blew it. Quite possibly the stupidest thing I ever did in my entire life and, and, and I've done some pretty stupid things. And then uh, 40 years passes by and I had given up, <laughs> hadn't even thought about Cupid's arrow and for the second time in my life on a sidewalk in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania four and a half years ago. It happened again. And for four and a half years I have been, as you guys know, living a living Hell. And 
the old battle of the heart versus the head. Uh, I have always chosen heart over head. Uh, for four and a half years, uh, I, I have been waiting patiently for my obvious soulmate to understand waiting around like I did with Carrie Jane Richmond for six years for my second chance. I was given a second chance in life to redeem myself uh, after that blunder. I, the biggest blunder I made in my fucking life 44 years ago. Uh, I, the universe gave me a second chance. All I had to do was convince the, 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 this woman that she and I were soulmates and needed to spend the rest of our lives together and so I don't know who the 13 of you on the planet were who saw that fucking video I put out last night uh, they, they, they all say it's about timing. I published that video at 10, 10 last night. I think I remember site so is gone now. I think you, you might remember me saying, as I say, at the opening of that video, I wonder how much trouble this is going to get me into. And I did, well, it was certainly the stupidest thing I have done in, I have done since starting Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I hit the publish button at 10, 10, six minutes later, a video had been up for six fucking minutes. Six minutes later, I get the email that I had been waiting for from my soulmate who I had just made a video about a, a, a very uh, crass video where uh, I, I said some things that the, the, the it, it was the point of that video was you know making fun of myself for giving this woman so much power over me that and I put that fucking video up at 1010 at 1016 I received an email from you know who we're talking about from Dulcinea this very nice email at 1016 I had been waiting for that email uh, all night the night before, all day yesterday, uh, she had not responded to my emails, uh, my texts, uh, what not. Uh, I, 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 I had not slept in three nights, I was half drunk. I was, uh, I, at, I said, okay, she has until 10 o'clock to email me. 10 o'clock came and went. At 10.10, 10, I, I checked one more time for an email, 
and it said, uh, I, 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 I've just had it, I, 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 I'm going to go for this, uh, just, just to stir up some shit with her to get a response, uh, kidding around, uh, and I published the fucking video at 1010, at 1016, the fucking email that I had been waiting for for 24 hours arrived, and I went, mother fucker! And I yanked down the video, 13 people on this planet had seen that video, one of them, of course, being Dulcinea. And uh, d d d despite how many emails I sent to her last night, text, uh, that, that, that groveling, uh, that groveling uh, video I put out begging her forgiveness, uh, I crossed the line with her. Uh, it, it, it was, it, it, it was completely, uh, out of line. Uh, she had every reason never to speak to me again, and, uh, 12 hours later, now 14 hours later, absolute red line from, uh, Dulcinea. The, the last words I will ever hear from that woman was the last email she sent me was, Damn, you're a good writer. And then she went and watched that fucking video that had been up for six fucking minutes. And finally, this whole faded love affair ha ha has, has been put out of its fucking misery. And, and, and here I am, uh, the, the, the next morning, as they say now, the next afternoon, uh, just absolutely, like, here I am again, 44 years later, that was putting up that smart ass video last night was, was every bit a, 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 as big a fuck up as, as, as walking away from Carrie Jane Richmond 44 years ago. If, if, if I could have waited six fucking minutes, but it, 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 you know, guys, it, it's just the universe had to put an end to this, and, uh, and New Year's Eve is, is, is as good a time as any, it, you, you know, since day one, my head has known that there is no chance that Dulcinea and I we're gonna get together and, and start a life together any more than Don Quixote uh, and Dulcinea, any more than Charlie Brown and the little red-haired girl. Uh, that that it was a, an absolute love in vain. Everything about it, from an intellectual standpoint, was wrong. I need Dulcinea in my life like I need a fucking hole in my head. But without her in my life, this hole in my heart uh, is, is, is just a, I'm just going to have this hole in my heart until the day I die. So uh, for years, I've uh, you know how many times ha have I tried 
to uh, to to walk away, letting my head tell me, "Ham, this 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 doomed love affair uh, is not good for you. This is a toxic, sick, twisted relationship, and I'm not blaming it on Dulcinea." It was just wrong. There, there is it, it, from a, a head intellectual perspective. I have known since day one. I had no business being in being in love. Being in love. Uh, w w with Dulcinea, everything about it was wrong, but it doesn't matter as, as, as those quotes that you never heard. It doesn't matter. Uh, what your head has to say about it. All my heart knew and, and knows. Uh, it, it, it is that that woman uh, is the woman that I need to be with uh, till the day I die, uh, no matter what my fucking head says. And, and, and for four and a half years, this hell has been going on in my life, and it needed to end. And obviously the universe... Uh, decided in those six minutes between 10.10 10 and 10.16 p.m. last night that this shit had to end. There is no way that Shakespeare could have scripted this comic tragedy. Uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet have nothing on Hambone and Maggie. It, 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 it had to end. There is no way uh, I can begin healing until the, the boil was lanced as the handbook for the new paradigm. That healing cannot begin until you lance the boil. You lance the boil, you pull the tooth, you, 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 you puke, uh, whatever it is you need to do, it, it has to happen before healing begins. So uh, whether, whether what went down whether it was whether it was uh, Maggie's fault uh, for not communicating with me in 24 hours, whether it was Lulu from uh, Pittsburgh's fault that she wrote that email uh, to me that I had no business reading out loud. Uh, well, she, I, I, I wrote Lulu this morning, you know, I don't know whether to say fuck you or thank you, but you were the catalyst for the final nail in the coffin. It, 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 it had to happen. And, and here I'm sitting, uh, my heart has been ripped out of my body. I have nobody but myself to blame for it. But my head is trying to tell me, uh, Hambone, uh, is, uh, you don't want to hear it with uh, the boatload of pain you are in today. But it had to end that you cannot move on with your life. Uh, with, with uh, dragging around th this hopeless, doomed love affair. It, 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 it's, go it, it, it's going to fuck you up. 
uh, and, until the day you die, you, uh, it, 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 it's holding you back from meeting other women, whatever, uh, it had to end, and if that's the way it ended, uh, by you hitting that fucking publish button uh, on, on that smart ass email six minutes too soon. That's the way it had to end. That uh, it, 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 it was time to let it the fuck go. As that email said, as for Dulcinea, get over it! So Dulcinea, as you know, I love you more than any woman uh, on this planet. I will be in love with you and carry the torch for you until the day I die. You will live in my heart till the day I die. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the, the fickle finger of fate uh, did not see fit for us to be together and uh, someday this will make a funny story it has been quite the adventure having you in my life Dulcinea I love you and uh, with that, I am going to wrap up this wine. I am going to wrap up 2023. And I am going to, for the first time in four and a half years, I am going to head to a big picking party, hopefully with some single women there who are not married, who don't live in Pittsburgh, who play guitar and uh, are available to someone like me. I am starting a new beginning without this fucking uh, whatever this is this chain around my heart that uh, hopefully the universe ha has, has helped sever. Uh, I am looking forward to uh, 2024 uh, hoping uh, that the woman I need to be with and who needs and wants to be with me shows up. I will see you guys next year. Get out there and find the love of your life while you still can. And if you find her or him, hold on with both hands. Being alone sucks. See, Pop, you're not alone. You got a little dog with you. What do you mean you're alone? You're not alone. You got the little dog here. Bye, guys. <laughs>